but he wants you to trust in him with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul. He wants you to be all in. He doesn't want parts of you, you know? That's for social media to see how it rolls. No, no, no. Jesus wants all of you. Are you able to be fully surrendered, fully persuaded? <laughs>
to be all in as a believer in Christ, to be all in as a submissive wife to our husband, to be all in as a parent to our children, to be all in as, an, as a ministry leader or even a co-worker on the job, Lord. We, we want to be all in and invested and fully persuaded by faith and through the Spirit to operate in excellence with every spiritual gift that you have bestowed upon us, God. We will not sit on your gifts. We will not We will not just sit and just be lazy, God. We will rest on your word and we will do what you've called us to do. We will not be moved by this world or the tactics or the lies of the enemy. We will be unshakable and victorious because every season that we align up our lives with your perfect will, we will always win because you are the perfect coach. So Abba, I pray as your viewers are listening, that they hear what you designed for them to hear on the day. Their spiritual ears are open. Their spiritual lenses are focused and tuned in to every entity of what you truly want them to know about being all in. So have your way, God. We love you. We adore you. We bless you. We honor you. In Jesus' most precious name, amen. All right, guys. Let's get started. So the first things first, we can only progress in his perfect will by following his every instruction. What was the last thing that God has told you to do, friends? What was it? Was it to start that prayer ministry? Was it to, to write that book? Was it to, you know, give tithes consistently? like regularly like what was the last instruction that God told you to do was it to join the church that you actually hear God's voice but yet you're stuck in a church or ministry or small group that's comfortable because you have friends there or because it it, it, it feels great to your heart or your mind but what did God want you to do? Did he want you to move on faith and step on faith and transition you into ministry or a, a leadership position or a new position at your job that is uncomfortable physically, but spiritually you're mature and equipped for it because you have the kingdom of God within you. Friends, we can only progress in God's perfect will as we choose to follow his every instruction. Abba, you as my coach, I know I will win every single time. Favor is not fair, butterflies, but who is your coach? Is it social media? Is it your friends? Is it your parents? Is it even yourself? Who is your coach? Like, like who are you running to? Like, I, I posted a uh, meme on my Instagram because, um, you know, this whole bandwagon thingy um about Popeye's sandwich or what have you um everybody was running to go try the sandwich but what's so interesting to me is nobody thought to look at the ingredients of what's in the sandwich nobody thought um to read up on you know the calories or read up on you know what is really in the sandwich but because somebody said mama said sister said auntie uncle cousin sister instagram follower said the sandwich was good you got on your car and you drove yourself to a place that had a long line you spent your money to get the sandwich because of what somebody else said so my question is how come when times are rough times are tough you don't run to the very creator that created you there's no long line to get to Jesus. You don't have to pay Jesus to talk to him. You don't have to, you don't, you don't have to, you know, wait in line. You don't have to, you know, even go to a destination that is, you know, full of cars. You don't have to wait in a drive through You don't have to, you know, go through the hoops. You don't even have to believe what somebody else has said in order to get the answer that you need. You can ask Jesus yourself by believing in him, by choosing him as your personal savior, and by forming that relationship with Jesus Christ. It's just like your best friend. 
in order for that best friend to have happened in your life, there had to be a conversation. There had to be communication. There had to be some compatibility. There had to be some kind of interaction, you know, some kind of outing together event. It's just like a husband and a wife. Like, I love my husband with all of me. And in order to really know who he is and, and, and enjoy time with my husband, I had to talk with him. <laughs> I mean, how awful would that be to go months and just not say anything to my husband? Like, share the same bed, eat food, we cook, you know, go to work, drive in it together, but not say nothing to him. Like, how would that even work like most people who like Joyce why you not talking to your husband why you're not talking like why y'all why y'all distant why y'all not talking like what's going on with y'all that's what God's trying to figure out what's going on with you and him like he's trying to understand why are you going to Popeyes and getting a sandwich but yet you won't even sit still and let your coach train you in the specific season that you're currently in you want you want the husband but yet, you won't even go to your creator to get that relationship in check. But you want a person to fill the void that only God can fill. You want the promotion, but yet, you are not able to talk to Jesus about a co-worker that's going through a rough time. You think that she's talking about you, but in reality, she's going through a really hard time. She's having thoughts about committing suicide, but you're in your feelings thinking that she's trying to get your spot, your position in work, and she's going through a hard time. In those moments, you could be praying for her. You could be encouraging her instead of following the lies of the enemy, the deceptive ways of the enemy. You're so busy focused on what you think she's doing instead of staying in tune with your creator to know what he is doing through you, what he is changing within you, and what he's removing from you. Are you all in? Are you halfway a believer in Christ? Are you are, are you partially in? Like, ask yourself, like, where are you? Let's go to Psalm 95, verse 10 through 11. It says, 40 years long was I grieved with this generation and said, it is a people that do err in their heart. And they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath, that they should not enter into my rest. That is the Lord speaking through David. And there's a reference verse. It's Hebrews 4, chapter 4, verses 7 through 16. And I'm going to read the reference verse. It reads, again, he limited a certain day, saying in David, this is the Lord saying in David, today, after so long a time, as it is said today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that entered into his rest he also had seized from his own works, as God did from his. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and of marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts, and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need 
How amazing is the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you able to enter into his rest? If there's not peace within your heart, within your mind, within your spirit, then your heart has become hardened. Is there unforgiveness in your heart? Is there resentment? Is there pride? Is there envy? Is there anger? Is it frustration? Is it that you're feeling like you're not enough? Are you listening to the lies of the enemy? Are you raffling your feathers because of what so-and-so did in your job or because of what your family did, in your family did to you or because of what happened? Are you ruffling your feathers? Why are you not praying as much as you're gossiping about it? Why are you not talking to the Lord about it instead of reliving it in your mind? Why are you not talking to a friend that's an encourager, that has a Holy Spirit within them that actually can pray you through things instead of subliminally messaging about it on Facebook or, or Instagram? Friends, there has to be a time where we allow the Lord Jesus Christ into our hearts completely so that we can be fully persuaded to follow him all the way. Like, are you all in? Just like a coach on a team. You can't play the pl the same play every single game. Like, every single season. You have to switch it up. You have to do different things. Every season requires a different play to be played. Because you want to mature. You want to develop. You want to you wanna get, get to a place where you can grow in stamina. And grow your energy and, and get those muscles tuned up. And, and you want to stay stay persistent. You want to work out, eat right, drink a lot of water. You want to, you know, do, you know, trainings and workouts. And you want to consistently grow. That's how our Christian life should be. As a believer in Christ, we should be always striving to learn more, to grow more, to be like Christ, to read our Bibles more, to spend time with him more, to have, be intimate with God, to sit still and just rest before him and let him just downpour into you. The greatest moments I ever have is when I'm silent. I get to see God do marvelous things. I get to see him in the spirit. Just on my birthday morning, I was able to see in the spirit on my ceiling in my new place and see the Lord. Just just see his marvelous works. Have you been able to spend time with God where you're not looking at the minute, looking at the clock and making it a part of your check off to do list, but really enjoying the time spent with the Lord, making it a valuable experience so that you would want to encounter with him again. The next point is learning season by season. The first point was harden not your heart. But the second point is learn, learning season by season. This is from Psalms. It reads this. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of God. That's Psalms 92 12 verses 12 and 13 every season friends god takes us on an on a on a mini journey the whole life is a journey but he takes on a mini mini journey and um, he wants to, to to grow us and develop us and he wants to take us through these different plights different parts of the life that require us to need him require us to pray even harder require us to be still or require us to cry and say god i need you i can't do this on my own I need your help. I fully surrender it all to you, God. That's what he wants. If you feel as though you can take care of things yourself or you feel like you can do all these things, you're going to always be in, in the mode of complaining or frustrated or, you know, just stressed. You know, that you're going to allow that into you if you do not follow through with being teachable. If you are going to be stuck in your ways, you're going to be stuck in the season. Why not allow yourself to grow in that season and become better and not bitter? Let's go to the last point. Endurance no matter what. In order for us to be all in, whenever the coach says, all right, guys, we ready? One, two, three, let's go. Whenever he, he does that last point, that means there's going to be endurance no matter what. That means you're going to give it all you got. You want to win this game. You want to pass the ball. You want to get that last dunk. You want to get that touchdown. You want to, you know, if you're doing cross country, you want to run as fast as you can. If you want to track, if you're playing hockey, whatever sport it is, even cheerleading, 
for the ladies. Hey, if you want to, you know, make sure that you're a spotter and you're getting that girl and you're not letting that girl, you know, drop on the ground. Praise the Lord. You want to make sure that you're all in. You're giving it all you got. You're you're assertive. You're alert. You're ready to do what is needed. Let's go to the scripture verse. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doeth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. That's Hebrews chapter 12, 1 and 2. Jesus was so perfect in his selflessness. The joy that was set before him was us needing him, us wanting to give our lives to him, us wanting to be fully persuaded that Jesus Christ is the Lord, that we are, we are literally like a fragment, like we're a fragment, we're dust, like we're like this small. <laughs> When Jesus was, is within us, we are marvelous, we are mighty, we're strong, we're victorious. So I challenge you, endure until the end, no matter what. God already knows the plans that he has for you. He has plans to prosper your way, but he wants you to trust in him with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul. He wants you to be all in. He doesn't want parts of you, you know. That's for social media to see how it rolls. No, no. Jesus wants all of you. Are you able to be fully surrendered, fully persuaded to let God in so that you can win every season, every plight? You already know you're victorious in Christ Jesus. The enemy is already defeated. No need for fear. No need for stress. No, no need for doubt. No need for that. Because as Jesus is within you, you cannot fail. That's Psalm 46, five. So butterflies, leave with this. We can only progress in his perfect will by following his every instruction. Say this, Abba, you as my coach, I will win every time in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I pray you are you're blessed and glorified by this message. I pray that your listeners were hearing what you have to say to each of them. God, I pray that any have backslid. I pray that they repent and turn back to you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for covering them. Thank you for protecting them from all harm. Thank you for just giving them wisdom and a, and a sound, peaceful night's rest. Lord, have your way in this ministry and have your way in our lives forevermore. All we want to do is be all in with you. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you guys. I know I'm praying for you. Thanks for all the birthday love once again. I, I just, I'm, I'm still in awe of the Lord that he's allowed me to see chapter 27. So I pray this this blessed you today and know that I'm praying for you. I love you all so much. And don't forget to subscribe to this video and our channel, of course. And I'll see you on the next one next Monday. Bye, friends.